either you got shorter or the stacks have gotten taller. Because I remember last time we were here, they were kind of like, you know, to your elbow or something in the middle. Yeah, stacks, you know what I'm saying? Stacks have definitely gotten taller. I'm running out of room, man. You're yeah. running out of room. I don't know what to do. Okay, so how big is the total collection, including what's in this room and what's in storage right now? Pause to how big. But um, <laughs> <laughs> now I got to message you, Vlad. I stopped counting at 2,600 pair, but I'm, I'm definitely close to 3,000 pair now. 3,000? Yeah, between this and storage, you got to be at least 3,000. Now, now, I remember last time... You know, you had roughly a half million dollar collection. Mm -hmm. What's it at now, you think? A lot more. Maybe 750? Yeah, easy. If you S broke it down, yeah, 750. About 750. Yeah. You know, because, you know, uh, Jordy from, uh, from Shoeseum claims he has a million dollar collection. What's up, Jordy? If he says he got it, he got it. I mean, I, who am I to question? Yeah. I know you got a hell of a lot of kicks, so but, who am I to question? But you guys are up there in the same, in the same kind of level, you think, more or less? No disrespect to Jody, but it's a different thing. You know, Jody sold shoes in the beginning. You know, Jody did what he did. I'm a sneaker wearer. Right. So right. You don't sell nothing. No, nah, no. Nah. I you sold like you know, the street. When I, when, when I moved into my, when I first bought my house, uh, there was a burglary right next door to my house. And I was nervous because I was moving all my shoes in. And, you know, buying the house, moving, buying furniture. I was uh -huh. long cash. And I had a connect. So, like the Pata Pata Air Max ones, I had like seven pair of them. Mm -hmm. And I sold them for like $1,000 each just to buy my, uh, my alarm system. Okay. So that's probably the only time I ever sold shoes. Okay, but in general, you never no, sold. No, 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 no. I did it because I needed the bread to pay for the alarm system. You know, and like, like one of the things that we were talking about is people who wear shoes versus people who dead stock shoes. Yeah. You know, you don't dead stock nothing. Well, yes and no. I, we, you're talking 3,000 pair. I haven't got a chance to wear 3,000 pair. Okay. Because there was a point in my life where the shoes were just coming in droves. You know, when, when my relationship with Nike was at its... At its highest, mm -hmm. boxes were coming in every single day. So okay. it's a different ball game. But um, I try to wear a brand new pair of sneakers every day. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been wearing a brand new pair of sneakers every day? Years. Years. Ten? I, I, I joke around and say I could wear a brand new pair of sneakers every day for nine years. Okay. I can do that going forward now for the going rest of my life. Going forward now. So for yeah. nine years, 365 days a year, yeah. you pull out a brand new pair of sneakers. Yeah. Right. Nine, nine times three, 27, add to 65. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Okay. I can count a little bit. Okay. So, you know, last time we went through and, you know, picked out a couple, you know, gems from throughout the collection. You, you know, you want to go ahead and, you know, work our way back? You I know? mean, we could walk around the room. If you see something you want to talk about, we could definitely talk about it. Why not? Okay. Well, let's take a look here. What in this section do you think really stands out like crazy? Oh, uh, well, we can go back to stand right in front. I mean, okay. the made to order crocodile Nike pack. There's only 24 pair in existence. Okay. Uh, it's actually 28 pairs, 14 and 14. I have them all. So okay. It's 14. It's it's seven black croc, seven white croc, and there's doubles of each. So. Okay. So that's 14, 14. Can we, take 10, the, can we take a look at the black crocs? Yeah, yeah. So. So this is. Oh, that was cute. So this is all black, premium leather, and this is real crocodile. This is the last time the Nike has used real crocodile materials on any shoe. Okay. They don't do it no more, I guess, Peter, or whatever the case may be. But this was supposed to be a made-to-order pack at $2,000 a pair. And uh, I have both set of samples. So the samples were size 9, again, you know, with 14 pairs, 7 white, 7 black, and there's doubles. Okay. So I have them all. So some of them are over here, and okay. some of them are back there. Somewhere. So it actually costs $2,000 to order. So it's, it's almost like a Nike ID kind of thing? It was thing. supposed to be like a made-to-order pack, just this. But they wound up never happening and nobody could have ordered them, so I wound up with the samples and I paid nowhere near next to two thousand dollars for them. I paid damn near nothing for them. So these were the handmade in Italy's. Retail on this was actually two thousand dollars. And uh Nike actually gave me these. Yeah, so these are number four, eighty eight out of a thousand. This was actually a gift from Nike. Right. These are dope. I love these things. Fat Joe had a pair of those too, right? Yeah, fat but Fat Joe with the ones that Fat Joe and Bobito and I think um Outcast had. They were in a special box and it was a different shoe. Like the thing was actually gold. This was before this came out. That was years before that. They had okay. that shoe. I never had it. That's an incredible shoe. I wish I could have had that. Okay. Now, uh, underneath that box, you have the Red Octobers. Yay, Red Octobers. Anybody who knows me knows I wasn't a Yeezy fan. Well, I'm a Yeezy fan as far as music. I'm a big Yeezy fan. Uh, but the first Kanye shoe, the Yeezy one, I hated. I couldn't stand it. It was one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever put on, though. My daughter made me wear it to her Sweet 16. Okay. And I had the shoe like months before it came out. Okay. I wore it to like a party and everybody was freaking out. Um, it was ugly to me. Okay. And, uh, but again, super comfortable. This one I actually wound up liking. And uh, I wound up with a pair of the red ones. I got the other ones, the black ones, the gray ones. So. 
Now, you know, when you don't see these in person, you don't realize how, like, sort of pink they are. I mean, they're not, like, true red. No, no, it's it almost is, like an infrared. It's like an infrared. It's almost like an infrared, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's a cool shooter. I mean, I actually like this shoe. This one I like. Again, the first one I couldn't stand. Yeah, I wore this one, yeah. It seems like these shoes really set off just a wave of all red shoes. Would you say that? I mean, there was red shoes before that. I mean, we could dig through the collection, and I'm sure I could find some red shoes. But, I mean, everything, brands have a tendency when something's hot or, again, you got a guy like Kanye, you got one of the biggest guys in the game. When they stand behind something, of course, everybody's going to fall in the suit. You know what I'm saying? So, but it definitely sparked some, a whole bunch of red stuff. But the other colors sparked, the black and uh, the solar red, whatever they want to call it, the black, right. whatever the colors they want to call these things. They, um, they sparked off phone pods in that color, Air Max is in that color. Yeah. So... I guess it's just the whole Kanye aspect in general. Okay. I mean, why do you think, you know, because rappers have had shoes for years, you know? Mm -hmm. 50 Cent had, had his own sneakers. 50 had his, you Jay know, had his. Uh, I mean, Jay-Z had the S-Dots. Yeah. Um, who am I forgetting? I mean, you're going to go with, you know, Eminem having his, you know, Eminem. the rarest shoe ever. And, yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, you know. But, when, but, but the Eminem shoes were never really, really released. No. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about shoes that were actually released to the public. Yeah, well, I mean, you got Pusha T now with his Adidas, that Pusha T, that, right. that, that King, shout out to my man, King Push. My boy gave me a pair super early. I was super happy, super happy, super excited. Like, okay. and, and shoes are dope. I love that shoe. I wound up with about four pairs there around okay. here somewhere. So what is it about the Yeezys that have made people just lose their mind? The well, I think did? it was more, I got to give it more of just the fact that it's Kanye. It's the fact that it's probably one of the, you know, it's one of the biggest artists to date out there right now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you come to my era, you know, my era is Big J, you know what I'm saying, Eric B, Rakim, you know, going back before that, Boogie Down Productions, I mean, you're going back to that, but to everybody's generation now, you know, Ye's the God. So, you know what I'm saying? So when you have the guy right there, when you have, you know, Hove's man or, or you know, Kanye to put him in his own level, which he belongs in his own little bubble, you know what I'm saying? When you have him designing for the biggest brand in the game, it's a match made in heaven. Well, you know, I had, I had Twister, you know, on Vlad TV, maybe like, a year and a half ago, Shout something like twist. that. Yeah. You know, you know, Twister comes from you know Chicago, which mm -hmm. is you know Jordan Land, obviously. Yeah. And we had a conversation about you know this was before Kanye released uh, the Adidas Easy, you know, and he said that he didn't think that there was going to be as much attention for the Adidas Easy oh, as it is for the Nike. Was he wrong? <laughs> yeah, well, because you know he you know because his point was you know people just don't line up. And don't really care about Adidas the same way they do about Nike. There's not like a cult behind Adidas. It just goes to show you the power of Kanye West. Exactly. Which he should know already from music. Yeah. He's a talented guy. Yeah. But you know, look at him and look at one of his biggest records. Yay. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And again, that's not, the guy's super dope. I mean, it took me a million times to rewind and break down everything he ever said. But I mean, the guy's super talented. But look, yeah. what, look what it takes. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So if, if you know it from the music industry, and again, that's no disrespect to the man. The man is super talented. If you go from there and one of your biggest records is Ye, same thing. I mean, exactly. Ye could take somebody, you know what I'm saying, do that with that, and then do the same thing with the shoe. Yeah. It's the artist. It's the artist. Okay. And you actually have a pair of the, the Adidas Yeezys. Don't insult me. I have two pairs. Two pairs. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at them. Before these came out, I remember, you know, the, the, you know, people put up, you know, a picture of like some Uggs with like, you know, silver electrical tape going mm -hmm. across and say, hey, I got the new Yeezy boots. They got it right. <laughs> But they got it right. But they came out and people lost their fucking mind. Again. Again. Kanye. You know, so, actually, I was at Flight Club earlier today and these are going for 3500 mm -hmm. at Flight Club, now, which is pretty much what the Yeezy 2s and 1s yeah, I mean, go that's for. His, that's, his, that's his market. I mean, that's what it is. But again, again, Kanye. And nothing, nothing against Kanye. Um, what I will say about this is never turn down free gifts. They obviously both have the strap, mm -hmm. you know. But I kind of feel that's just, that's about it. <laughs> I mean, that's about it. I mean, the strap across the front. I yeah. mean, you know, he went, this, this Yeezy Boost thing is, I mean, this, uh, this 350 Boost, the 750, the 750 Boost, I mean, is, it's incredibly comfortable. You know, I wore them and walk around the house with them. I haven't worn them in the street yet. Um, I don't like the no tongue aspect. Oh, right. Does it have a tongue? I don't like I the no tongue aspect. I never actually like the slipping thing. Um, oh, I had a friend who actually wore them and a zipper broke on them. Really? Yeah. So I don't know what he did with that. But um, I don't like that part. Uh, again, it's super comfortable from walking around the house. And, uh, again, I don't turn down free gifts, so. Okay. <laughs> like I said. I mean, it, from personal, you know, from your personal taste, if you were to compare these two shoes, which I like, like the better. Red October better. You do? Yeah. Not, not even a question. No question. Not even a question. Is it because you like Nike better in general? Uh, Nike's my favorite brand, but no. No. 
I mean, the first show I ever designed was a fila. I mean, so I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's going to be, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, I love Adidas. I have a lot of shell toes. Um, a Life Adidas, the Iraq joints, one of my favorite sneakers. Yeah. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with Adidas at all. They make some super dope stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually seed me and send me stuff. Shout out to Adidas. You guys are great. Um, Nike's my favorite brand. Now. Okay. And it's not even a question. It's like clothes. You have favorite clothes. You have favorite clothing brands. You have favorite sunglasses brands. You have favorite sneakers. And yeah. Nike's my favorite sneaker wise. Hey, have you seen the uh, the new uh, Yeezy Lows? Yeah. What do you think? I've seen them before. Anybody seen them? Okay. Yeah, they dope. They dope. They dope. How do you think they compare to the Yeezy Highs? I like it better than that. I like it better. I like you, the lows. You like better. the lows better than mm -hmm. the highs. Yeah. Do you think me. that the Yeezy Lows will have the same effect as the Yeezy Highs in terms of the market? Uh, it depends on how Adidas persuades it. If Adidas pushes it to be super limited, like they do everything, like they did with the with the first one, I think it's going to cause a frenzy. Okay. If they don't, if, if you're telling you it's available to retailers, I think it'll still cause a frenzy, not as much. Okay. Um, and again, what I do, well, why I do think it will cause commotion is because it's Kanye. Yeah. Point blank period. It's Kanye West. Kanye West deserves and commands that kind of respect. So. Well, you you know you know what kind of bothered me a little bit was. I saw a Kanye interview, and he was complaining about his situation with, with Nike. They were so limited that even he couldn't get extra pairs for himself. And he's like, yo, with Adidas, you'll at least be able to go to the store and hold it and check it out and, you know, possibly buy a pair. And that was, a, and to me, that was a little misleading to the people, too. Exactly, it because was, it was the exact same thing happened. It was misleading. Yeah. That, was, that definitely didn't happen. Yeah. And I also heard him complain on an interview, if I'm not mistaken, it was with The Breakfast Club. Shout out to my crew over at The Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I think he said that he was mad at the price point. Oh, really? Yeah. I think if you go back and look at that interview, if you pull it up, I think he was complaining. He didn't know the shoe was going to be 350 Yeah, it's 350 retail. Yeah, he Just pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. He didn't know the shoe was going to be 350 Huh. And, you know, hopefully they'll make the next ones more limited. If not... More power to the ones that love to hunt. More limited or less limited? Huh? More limited or less limited? They're going to make it super limited, whatever you want to call it. It's supposed yeah. to be, if, if it's supposed to be less pairs, good luck on the hunt. If there's more pairs, God bless. I hope everybody gets them. Right. You know, Vlad, we're in a day and age now where a kid can't ask his mommy to take him to the mall and buy him a pair of Jordans because they're not available. They're just gone the minute they come out. It's, right. It's a sad day. Yeah. So, you know, like, if they're there, let everybody get them. I had a situation yesterday. Um... I went over to Concepts in New York, the little pop-up shop in New York. They yeah. released their Boston Tea Party shoe. Line was around the corner. I pride myself on building relationships. I'm 30 years in this game. I don't wait online, and I'm cool with store owners. Okay. That was my choice to be cool with store owners. I started that. I made myself very, again, I pride myself on building relationships. That's my thing. That's what I'm king at. I'm okay. mayor at everything else. I'm king at building relationships. Okay. So I call up my man, Wes. I was like, yo, I'm outside. He's like, I'm working the register. Dion's going to come get you. Manager Dion, 20 seconds later, comes outside. Yo, mayor, what up? Boom. I walk in the door. See the owner, Tarek. It's my man. Tarek, cool dude, concepts. Hug it out, long time no see. You look great, haven't seen you in a while, you too. Um, I'm with my man. I bring my man, Michael Siegel, with me. Mm -hmm. Super cool dude, he loves sneakers. Bring him with me. So yo, we talking, shoes amazing. What size you wear, man? Yeah, let me get a nine. Let me get 10 and a half for my man. No problem. Tarek stops what he's doing, the owner. Mm -hmm. Lines around the corner, he's working, doing what he does. Stops, goes to the back, gets my shoes. Brings me out both pair of shoes, hands them to me. He's like, yo, mayor, no charge, they on me. No Tarek, no disrespect, absolutely not. You don't know my man from a can of, you, know, you don't know my man from a hole in the wall, from a can of paint. Right. I'm paying for my shoes. No, mayor, no, no, no. Tarek, listen, you've given me so much free stuff over the years. This is your pop-up shop, this is what you do. Doesn't want to take my money, walk over to the register, leave my money on the table, <laughs> wow. hug it out, walk out, gone. You know what I'm saying? So. Like it's just it's just different, and that, that, that's the that's the cool shit. Like that's the cool shit about it. That's what I respect, and that's just how it goes, man. When you build relationships, you ain't got to go through all that bullshit. But it's sad. In the same token, it's sad that a kid can't walk into a store and buy a shoe, a pair of shoes. He want. Mommy, can you buy me the shoe? How am I gonna get a few? Right. It's not available. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the, the one thing me and uh, me and Jordy from Shoesium was talking about was that that Nike is trying to basically cut out the resale market by continuously raising the price of the shoe and then creating like the premium, you know, you know, additions and stuff like that of it. I don't agree with that. No? No. When the shoes were out, when all these raggedy material Jordans, and if I may go off at the mouth, or which I call bullshit materials, was available, y'all complained about bullshit materials. Not you in general, y'all in general. Y'all complained about bullshit materials. Now you got Jordan brand that gives you regular, they give you good materials now, premium materials. You have to raise the price. Right? Gold is a lot more expensive now than it was back then. Mm -hmm. Quarter waters don't cost a quarter no more. Right. Now ladies don't cost 10 cents no more. Yeah. Same goddamn, same exact thing as before. Mm -hmm. Pack of M&M's used to cost me 45 cents. 
M and M's cost a dollar twenty five. Right. You know what I'm saying? Inflation. Yeah, I still eat M and M's. Um, you know what I'm saying? Price go up on shoes. Now these shoes are sitting on shelves because everybody's complaining about the price. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if you a shoe seller, you got to pay, and hopefully the consumer wants to pay. The consumer don't want to pay. Nike's not making more pairs. If they produce 185,000 pairs of uh, uh, 11s uh, and they produce 195,000 pairs of new, of new ones yeah. with the same uh, with, with new material, it's not that much more. Yeah. You're talking 10,000 more pairs, 20, even 50,000 more pairs for millions and millions of people. You know what I'm saying? People, the shoe sellers are complaining because if they grab that shoe and they can't sell it in four or five days, now they're stuck with more money out their pocket and they want the next shoe to come out next week. Mm-hmm. What I blame the brands for is putting out so much more product that it's burn and turn now. What have you done for me this week? Same thing with Vlad TV. Same thing with everything else. If you got, if a rapper got punched in his mouth or a rapper got robbed, it lasts till the next rapper get robbed, or until the next rapper gets arrested, or until the next rapper gets beat up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with shoes now. If I got this, these Harachis that come out next week, I got them now, right? Not that it's a hot selling shoe and it's gonna resell. Air Max 95 patches, pretty dope shoe. Next week, the 90 will come out. Yeah. Or the 90 came out already, and now the 95 came out, so now the 90's old news. Mm-hmm. That's what I blame the brands for. Y'all breaking me, going shopping every week. Right. You know what I'm saying? So forget the shoe seller, forget the middleman. At the end of the day, they're flooding the market with product. Yeah. Forget raising the price. Price going to go up on everything. This shoe is worth how much you think right now? I think it's easily worth $100,000. Easily. So this is a $100,000 shoe that's in front of you right now. There's just not any other out there. I wore a pair of sevens on a red carpet. And I think that it was the fact that it was Tahiri and she, you know, wore tight dresses and, you know, wore heels everywhere and was seen as this sex symbol. And she walked in with a pair of tights, a pair of sevens. 